So I've hopped into 3D Coat. You're getting pretty much the first kind of reaction to what I'm finding in here for the first time. I'm totally unfamiliar with this. I've been in there once before, a few months back to have a quick go. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just bring the mesh in. So the obvious thing for me would be to go to the file menu to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the file menu, import. I'm offered much more options than what I have in ZBrush. Um, this could be a good thing or a bad thing. For me, it's a bad thing because I don't understand what they are. Of course, once you do understand what they are, then that's not a problem. Um, in ZBrush, it's a case of just going to the tool and importing it. I'm going to import this, I think, for voxelization because this would be for sculpting. This would kind of give me a good basis. And if I, in fact, if I go to new, it kind of gives me an idea here. Um, service sculpting, voxel sculpting. They seem to be two different things. If I hover over it, it's telling me voxel sculptings are great for volumetric sculpting, mostly used for organic um, sculptures, but can also lend itself in some ways to hard surface sculpting. So by going into here, I've got some pre-made meshes. And this is what they call volume sculpting. I'm going to use this grow brush here. I do like the way that it, it moves around in 3D space. It seems to be nice and smooth and fluid. So that's really nice. I also much prefer the perspective. Uh, the perspective looks much more nicer in 3D coat than ZBrush. And also the environment. I like the fact that this grid is quite large. It makes you feel like you're working in a much bigger space which is quite nice. The, the navigation tools are pretty much the same as ZBrush. Um, so that's nice to be able to do that. Um, that's great. So let's just move on to a little bit of sculpting here. As you saw, the first one was kind of volume sculpting. So that's where we are now. I've got the grow brush selected. If I was to hold the middle mouse button down, or this, this button on my Wacom tablet that I've configured it, we can actually change the uh, intensity and the size by moving left and right. This is nice. I, I quite like the fact that I don't have to go to any menus or even any pop-up menus to adjust this. This is how I'd like to work. I would like it if ZBrush was like this, where I could just say, oh, I want a, a bigger brush. Let's just do it like that. It's, it's much more quicker. Let's move on to kind of the movement of sculpting here now. I would assume that symmetry's on. Um, and that the tablet is activated automatically, I will soon find out. Let's just move over this surface a little bit. And it does appear to be reacting to, yeah, it's definitely reacting to the, uh, the pressure. This grow, as you can see, when I'm moving from left to right, it tends to be kind of pulling it off to one direction it's almost like a, a kind of move tool it's a bit it's, it feels a bit strange i would compare this grow to zbrush's inflate it tends to react like the inflate I and mean, if we if, if we look at the, the hands and then we uh, go to the inflate it's definitely having that same kind of effect as in ZBrush. The movement seems to be quite fluid. I do feel a ever so slight delay, almost as if a lazy mouse kind of function is being put on, but that delay is not necessarily a bad thing. But what, what it feels like is it feels like I'm working with plasticine or some kind of um, latex, not like clay. It doesn't feel like clay. This could be an attribute just down to the fact that we're working with voxels. Let's move on to 
the smooth. Now the smooth, like ZBrush, is activated by our, our shift key. Smooths again, it's responsive. I would like to know whether smooth has got two operations like within ZBrush. And what I mean by that is, is that in ZBrush, you can smooth over a surface and it picks up where it's moving it from. And if I hold down the shift key in ZBrush and start to smooth and then let it go, what it does is it actually just smooths over the peak surfaces and it doesn't affect the volume too much. This smooth appears to be having almost like a polish effect, if you can see here. If I was to jump into ZBrush and select the H polish, this is what it would do. It would create like a flat, hard surface. Um, this is not what um, typically what ZBrush would do. But but the smoothing is, is smooth. I mean, the, the brush strokes are smooth with a smooth tool. There's no worries there, apart from the fact that it might affect the volume too much in certain areas. Um, I do have the ability in ZBrush to sculpt over either volume or over the surface detail as separate um, strokes. Um, what should we move to next? Let's go to this clay. How, what does this clay feel like? Right, this clay is pulling it off in the normal direction as you can see here. It's not really creating any layers as per se, like ZBrush would. This feels more to me like the standard brush in ZBrush. And again, I don't feel the same kind of feel that I do in ZBrush with this. It's not to say that I wouldn't be able to work with it. By all means, I certainly would be able to work with it. But it feels like I'm working with latex rubber in the way that it's responding. It's having quite a, 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 a bigger kind of effect overall. And again, this smooth, I'm not liking this smooth, the way that it's affecting there when I'm holding in the shift key. It's um, not nice, but it could be the fact that because I don't know the program, that the shift key is actually activating something else other than smooth. Maybe, maybe you can tell me that. Let's move on to the carve and feel this one here. Right, the carve, from the, the feeling of it and the initial look, seems it's more like the clay brush within ZBrush. However, if you look from an angle there, you can see it's kind of creating a, a very bizarre kind of surface. I'm not sure I quite understand what it's doing here. It's not desired. But this carve isn't meant to be a clay brush. It just initially kind of looks like it from the front surface there. Um, blob. Uh, strange. Don't understand what that does, but I'll just move on. I'm just getting a general feel for this. Um, the airbrush. Okay, this, this is feeling a little bit more like the dam standard brush, but just less detailed. So the dam standard brush is where I would kind of create creases as if it's cloth. So like that. Like that's his jumper. But it's just not as refined. It just does, it doesn't feel as refined. But I'm sure with other options, you could certainly refine it within this program. I'm going more feel at the moment actually than anything else. It's certainly fluid. I can't complain about that. It's fluid enough. It does. It just doesn't feel like I'm working on clay. And I suppose if you're coming from the perspective of never using ZBrush before, then you wouldn't know any different. I can just imagine that if I was to be using this instead of ZBrush, that 
I wouldn't get quite the finesse that I, I'm used to getting. Of course, you know, to be brutally honest with you, I've just come in here for the first time, so. It's certainly by no means bad what I'm feeling. It's just different. And that's the way I would put it. It's definitely different. Um, the build. That feels more like the standard brush. Definitely more like the standard brush and Z brush. It's pulling towards its normal by the feel of it and the look of it. Um, scrape. Let's try this. Okay, this in comparison is more like the H polish in ZBrush. Only the H polish in ZBrush allows you to actually build up surface form as well as flatten it off. But this feels just as fluid as the ZBrush um, equivalent, if that's what this is meant to be. And in some respects, it's kind of reacting more like how ZBrush's um, smooth tool is. But no, it's more like a H polish actually, definitely more like a H polish. There's no reason why you couldn't get some decent sculpting done in this program from what I can feel. I just feel that the finesse that I have in ZBrush is just not quite there. And that I'm working more off plasticine kind of plastic rubbery kind of uh, a feel that's what it feels like the surface is um, let's just move on to the, the pinch there's our pinch That's just really as far as I can take that to this level. So let's just go to new. Let's just go to the surface sculpting and see what this does. That took a little bit longer to get into there. And again, we're still in the same area here. We're in the same, we're in the sculpt room. We've got the same tools there. Um, What's this? This is. Scott, I'll just double click to rename it and uh, indicate the density of the voxels five times. Okay, so this looks to me like this is more like sculpting in ZBrush, where we've got different sub D levels. How you would increase that, I don't know. It definitely feels like I'm sculpting on plastic. I would say to anybody that's kind of deliberating between buying ZBrush or 3D Coat is for you to try it for yourself. For my observations of what others have said, more experienced users, is that 3D Coat has got a damn decent set of sculpting tools in it. It certainly doesn't feel bad by any means. It just feels different. But it's got a lot of other features in there which are definitely desirable, like the painting tools are much more nicer, um, according to others. Um, the topology tools are far, far ahead of ZBrushes by a long shot. So if you're looking for a sculpting application which does you sculpting adequately you need the topology tools and more advanced painting options and you want to go for a cheaper solution then 3d co would seem the way to go from what i can feel from these early stages of sculpting in here it certainly doesn't feel quite like zbrush it's got this less organic feel than what ZBrush has got. It feels like I'm working on plastic. 
in ZBrush it feels like I'm working on clay by the feedback that I'm getting and the way that it kind of looks as I'm leaving the strokes. Um, one of the, my favorite tools in ZBrush is the clay tool. This is not reacting nothing like the clay tool that I would expect it to be like. That said, you know, I've just selected the, the, the basic clay brush. We've got these different clay types in here. So, you know, take my opinions of what I'm telling you now as for what they are a newbie into this program, but not a newbie for sculpting. I'm not feeling any difference in any of these what appears to be presets. This one feels a little bit different. Um, okay, this one feels more like H polish again. Not bad at all. I will leave more advanced and experienced users um, that have used this for a while to show you what it can do in comparison to the features that I've showed you today so that you can see the process that I've gone through in comparison to the process that you would have to go through to get the same things done in 3D code. Where I'm going to leave you in this video however ever, is I'm going to just finally go back into ZBrush and to show a workflow procedure of generating a displacement map, a normal map. Um, and then hopefully you'll be able to watch a, a similar video to what I've produced showing you the same process but the different steps you have to go through to get there. From observations of 3D Coat being in there a very short period of time, I'd, I'd have to say that the the brushes don't feel quite as fluid and quite as re, as um, reactive um, with my Wacom tablet as ZBrush. Um, it's early days, obviously. I haven't used this very much. It the interface is definitely much more cleaner for the new user, um, and I think that's mainly down to the fact that we've got different rooms to work in. We've got a render room, a read topology room. And each time you go into these different rooms, you're presented with different sets of tools. Some of them are pretty much the same. But if you can imagine that you didn't have all of these rooms and that all of these tools were presented in front of you, it would actually make the ZBrush look quite simplistic and basic because there's a lot going on in this program um, combined of all these rooms. But I don't find this intimidating at all. I don't find this program initially intimidating as a new user to this. It certainly is quite appealing. I like the color of it um, from first appearance. It's just, it doesn't feel quite the same for sculpting for me. Um, yes, that's the only thing that I could really say about that. I'm gonna head off back into ZBrush and I'm going to show you the rough procedure of how that I would produce a displacement map or normal map from a basic mesh that I've brought in. So that you can see the steps I'm having to go through in order to get from A to B to Z.